Welcome to today's podcast of Everyone Has the Freedom to Choose. This is Deb King. Join us for today's Cornerstone Conversation, Full to Empty. We come into this world full, full of everything we need to accomplish all that God created us to be. And by the end of our lives, we need to be empty, all poured out. When we are fulfilling our God-given purpose, we pour into other people. We bring them help, hope, and love. Listening to this, as a pastor was preaching a eulogy, my thinking was considerably challenged. I would like to pass the challenge on. Have we considered this full-to-empty living as a life journey? What would that look like? We are all so different. Our challenges, gifts, and talents are even more diverse. How do we start? We start on our knees. I am reminded of the grandma that lived with me. She wasn't my physical relative, but rather she was a woman who was a widow and led a Bible study I attended. We had a wonderful connection and adopted each other. She had no kids. My family was distant and disconnected. She was my spiritual mom, mentor, and prayer warrior. She was a gift from God. Her name Inez, Grandma C, Granny, and Mama, depending on the circumstances and setting. It wasn't just me that she poured her life and love into. There wasn't a person that came her way that she didn't serve. She was the quintessential example of God's unconditional love, the epitome of his reflection to this hurting world. Prayer was her area of expertise. She could bring heaven down on hell itself, quick and as strong as a lightning strike. Then she'd pour God's grace, mercy, and love, smothering the enemy and fortifying, healing, and empowering the people that were in her path. The movie The War Room has the character Miss Clara. She is a great example of Grandma C, my mentor. When I heard Miss Clara's prayer at the end of the movie, It brought me back to Grandma's prayers and what it means to pour ourselves out. I have attached a link to the clip of that very prayer for us to gain a glimpse into Grandma's heart. Grandma C. left this world at the age of 95, meeting face-to-face the God who had set her feet a-dancing at age 17. That was in 2001, 16 years ago. And yet I am inspired, encouraged, and compelled to search for God's plan each day because of what she poured into my life. Mind you, there were times it couldn't have been convenient or easy for her to love me, at least not to my mind. But she didn't acknowledge my warts and shortcomings. She taught me by her example. I am a better person because of her love and passion for serving God and those he brought her way. We are born with our special gifts, talents, and personality. We are born with our purpose in God's eternal plan. We are equipped to be a reflection of our Heavenly Father to those around us when we are born. And then there is that free will that God gave us. From the beginning, mankind has struggled with temptation frequently looking for a path that appears easier, more gratifying, at least for the moment. In the long run, taking an eternal perspective, often taking the road less traveled, may seem less glamorous, but is far more beneficial. That road leads to the Father's heart. Jesus says it this way, Don't look for shortcuts to God. The market is flooded with surefire, easygoing formulas for a successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. Don't fall for that stuff. Even though crowds of people do, the way to life, to God, is vigorous and requires total attention. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14, the Message Translation. We are sojourners here on earth. This is not our final destination. We are passing through to our eternal destination. But we have a job. Our job here is to pour out his love, help, and hope 
to those around us. It is our job to pray God's kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we see in the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, verses 19 to 13, we are equipped for this leg of our journey by our Heavenly Father. We come full, filled with everything we need to accomplish all that God has planned for us. But we must choose to pour our lives out. It is a choice to invest in those God puts in our path. When we spend time with God, choosing to follow Him, we become more of a reflection of Him to those we meet. Jesus told Peter to feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and feed my sheep. Listen to Jesus' words. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. John 21, verses 15 to 17, the English Standard Version. Jesus gives us his direction on pouring into others. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and feed my people. Jesus is not just referring to taking care of spiritual needs. He's referring to reaching out, helping others' physical needs as well. But God doesn't end with caring for those who believe in him, who have accepted his gift of love, grace, and mercy. God gives us the direction to love him and our neighbors in Matthew 22, verses 36 to 40. Those two commandments complete all commandments. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Matthew 22, verses 36 to 40, the English Standard Version. When we pour ourselves out into others, we are a reflection of God to this world. It is a day-to-day process. We are all different in our gifts and talents. I am not a reflection of Grandma C. We have different gifts and talents, but we have the same directives from God. To use the gifts, talents, resources, and personalities that he created in us when he brought us into this world, to reach out to those he brings around us in this world. We are all different, but we have a God that didn't leave us on our own. He sent us his Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts. This Holy Spirit, when we ask him, guides, strengthens, and empowers us to be all that God created us to fulfill. Are you willing today to take up the full to empty living challenge? Thanks for listening and being a part of our conversation. You are welcome to pass it on.